This is module 23 called Bronzes from North, South, West and East India as part of the course on Indian Art and Aesthetics. I am Kanika Gupta from GNU. Learning Outcome In this module, bronze image making traditions and discoveries from across the Indian subcontinent have been discussed. Significant bronze images from each region have been studied. Iconography and stylistic analysis are the main tools used here. Introduction A look at various discoveries of hordes of metal sculptures from Indus Valley to image making even today in Tamil Nadu in their living traditions tell us that metal was extensively used for image making almost in every corner and at almost all points of time in the country. This module tries to cover many regions. And yet, it must not be treated as an exhaustive survey. With regard to many image-making traditions, like Kashmir, Tibet and Himachal, much work remains to be done. Bronzes have been discovered from Indus Valley civilization. The dancing girl and the toy carts from Demabad are few examples. This civilization flourished during Bronze Age and no traces of iron have yet been found from any site of this culture. Chosa, which is in Bihar. The next Big bronze image discovery was made from Chausa, Baksar district in Bihar. These are affiliated to Jain cult and are presently housed in Patna Museum, Bihar. These have been dated to late Kushana period. M. N. Deshpande makes the following remarks while analysing them stylistically. In the treatment of the hair with spiral curves, the Chausa bronzes have a common trait with Mathura stone sculptures. The Sarvato Bhadra stone image from Mathura appears to provide inspiration to the metal craftsmen in regard to the physical form of the Jinnah icon. In both the Chausa and Mathura images, the portions below the waist are disproportionately elongated in all the standing figures. The faces are usually round, with large open eyes, long earlobes and full cheeks with high cheekbones. In regard to the fashioning of the legs, the sculptures were careless, with the result that legs are rigid and stump-like and placed apart. The modelling of the breast is fleshy and in some cases borders on femininity. Exemplary in these are the images of Rishabhanath with long hair and a knot at the back of his head and a large image in Kayotsarga Mudra of about 48 centimeters. Rishabhanath can be identified by his long hair parting from the back in a certain manner. Brahmapuri Bronzes of high quality have also been discovered from Brahmapuri near Kolhapur in Maharashtra, Buddhan near Guntur in Andhra Pradesh and ancient Amravati. Two unique bronzes found from Brahmapuri show four elephant riders on a single beast. These are very close to stone sculptures seen on top of pillars at Karle, Kanheri, Junnar and Nasik caves. Each elephant rider has also been ma found made in terracotta from the city of Ter, ancient Tagara in Maharashtra. Ter was an extremely important centre during Satvahana period. However, usually the number of riders is two 
or sometimes three. But in Brahmapuri bronzes, four riders are seen on one elephant, which makes them very special. The miniature metal sculpture is fashioned with great skill and care. The sensitively modelled elephant is shown crouching on the ground as if about to rise with its riders settled on its back. The jewellery, dress, coiffure are typical of Satvahana period, especially the heavy turban worn by the man and the anklets, bangles and costume of the lady. It could be that this depicts a royal or noble couple going to a shrine accompanied by a female attendant and a page boy. The accomplished treatment shows the sure and skilled workmanship of the Satvahana metal artists. Another bronze shows a mythical lion, also called Yali, with the head of an eagle along with a beak. A typical mythical animal is also depicted on Sanchi Stupa, Amravati and Nasik Caves. There is also a metal ring with mythical creatures gathered on it. All these are presently with Kolapur Museum, Gupta period metal images. Images of Buddha made in metal have been discovered from post-Gupta period. These are spread across the world in various collections. These are few in number and only one Brahmanical image of Brahma, Mirpur Khas Sindh, has been found yet. Krishna Deva, in his article on uh, Gupta images, describes many of these metal images and analyzes them stylistically and makes the following observation. Metal images are, as a rule, made of bronze, copper mixed with a small percentage of tin and other alloys. And with the exception of the Sultan Ganj Buddha, which is larger than life size, Gupta metal images are all of smaller size, generally ranging from 30 to 50 centimeters in height. Unlike the stone images, which are commonly heavier and costlier, and meant to be permanently enshrined in one place. The bronze images are lighter and were intended to be portable. They were either carried in a procession or worshipped in a domestic shrine or even carried away as sacred mementos by pilgrims. We know that the Chinese pilgrim Fa Haim and Shon Sang carried Buddhist bronzes from India to China and another Chinese pilgrim Ai Sing records that small metal images were kept by Indian monks in residential cells of the Nalanda monastery and offered daily worship. Pakataka bronzes 
Around 10 bronze images have been found from Fostnar, East Nimar district, Madhya Pradesh and Ramtek, Vidarbha, Nagpur district in Maharashtra. These are both Vakataka sites and the images have also been described as of Vakataka origin by A.P. Jamkhedkar. Similarities in the bronzes of Amravati, Fofnar and Ramtek have been noticed by scholars. Inscriptions have also been found from some of these. Thus, based on the dating of inscriptions and on stylistic basis, they have been dated to 5th century common era. Bronze sculptures are usually smaller in size and therefore movable. Thus it becomes extremely difficult to determine in many cases exactly where they came from. The case of Fofner may be an exception to this. Jamkhedkar says, Since bronzes are movable objects of worship, their discovery at a certain place does not necessarily imply that they were made there. But the bronzes of Fofner are an exception, in that these are probably local products. Despite certain differences between individual pieces, they are stylistically similar enough to be the creations of the same atelier. All seven images have certain common features. They are all standing figures of Buddha, with the hair curly and top knotted. They all have the right hand raised in Abhaya Mudra, the gesture of granting protection from fear. Though no two pedestals are similar, the general set of mouldings is very much of the same order. Again, significant from the stylistic point of view is the treatment of the garment. Two of the seven images are shown with the upper garment, Sangati, worn around both shoulders while in the remaining five, the garment is draped in the manner of a sacred thread, Yagyopavit, keeping the right shoulder bare. Such differences also existed in the fashioning of the Buddha images of the two schools of sculpture of the Kushana period, namely the Gandhar and the Mathura schools. Three bronzes and a pedestal with inscription were found at Hamilapuri near Nagarbhan. Nagpur district in Maharashtra. Ramtek, ancient Ramagiri hill, also mentioned by Kalidas, is close to this place. Nagardhan has been identified with Nandivardhan, the capital of the main branch of Vakataka kings. This place may have been home to an ancient monastery. Mahapurushalakshana or marks indicating the personality of a superhuman power are visible in most bronzes. For example, three lines on the neck, webbed fingers, elongated earlobes, among others. Along with the three sculptures, an incense burner, a pedestal, air roads, and a donor inscription was also found. Akota branches. Akota, present-day Vadodara, has also yielded many Jain bronzes which are presently housed at Vadodara Museum and Picture Gallery. These include images of Ambika Goddess, which has been dated to late 6th century. Umakant P. Shah 
describes one image in the following words the modeling of the female form is typical of the style though exaggerated in certain details the goddess has a rather plump face with broad jaws and long eyes inlaid with silver the two heavy earrings may be noted the torso is comparatively small and slender the goddess wears an ekavali a single strand neck ornament a broad necklace and a garland with auspicious motifs her lower garment charanika has a design of broad bands interspersed with circular marks the goddess holds a mango bunch in the right hand and the left hand carrying a citron also supports the small sun on the lap she sits on a big lion with ferocious eyes and lolling tongue the halo is made of lotus petals and rays surrounded by a broad band of flames on top of which sits a miniature figure of a tirthankar the halo surrounds the crossbar of the back seat the two corners between the halo and the crossbar being occupied by crocodile heads the elaborate three pronged crown has a big gem in the center which is surmounted by a gavaksh window motif or a solar representation a large chinon tied on top of the head is visible from behind the face of the goddess is square the length from the chin to the hairline being equal to the breadth between the two ears these proportions are found in a number of metal images from this akota hoard and can be regarded as an iconometric trait of the old western indian school with the above image may be compared another image of ambika from the same hoard made of brass or bronze with a golden appearance the second ambika image discussed above is housed at national museum delhi this hoard also consisted of a group of 24 teethankaras worshiped together in a single piece called chaturvinshati patta or chovisi which was gifted by a lady called charanika dated 950 common era a chori bearer fly whisk bearer from this hoard is most delicately modeled another hoard of jain bronzes was discovered from vasantagar rajasthan an image of jain saraswati from this hoard was placed at a temple in pindavada from where it was stolen according to up shah its present location is unknown other objects images from this hoard are still with the temple in pindavada kashmir bronzes Douglas Barrett from British Museum was the first one to write on bronzes from Kashmir and recognize them as belonging to a separate school of art in his article in Lalit Kala published in 1962 He also identified an offshoot of Kashmir school in Swat Valley which is in Pakistan Unfortunately Hardly any of these bronzes are discovered from Kashmir or from archaeological strata. A majority was found from monasteries in Tibet after it was taken over by China. According to Pratapaditya Pal on stylistic grounds and on the grounds of 
technical studies undertaken recently at the Los Angeles County Museum of Art, it may be said that these were made in Kashmir. Kalhan, the Kashmiri chronicler of 12th century Common Era, who was the author of Raja Tarangini, described sculptures installed by King Lalita Aditya Mukta Peed, which can who can be dated to 700 to 750 Common Era. This king, along with his prime minister, Chankuna, who was probably from Central Asia, got many temples and monasteries built in the region and therefore may have got or patronized many sculptors among other artists. Works in Kashmir were executed in brass more often than in bronze and therefore are pale gold in color. Kashmir was a great center of Buddhist and Brahminical learning. Many Shaivite and Tantric ascetics are known from that region. For example, Lal Dev or Laleshwari was a great female poet and ascetic who interacted with many Sufis. However, mostly Buddhist bronzes have survived with a few Brahminical ones. Hardly any Jain bronze are found from this school. Two examples of Kashmiri bronzes are Bodhisattva Maitreya, and Chakrapurush, a male figure personifying the wheel of Vishnu. Pratapaditya Pal makes the following observation. Stylistically, both reflect vestiges of the earlier Gandharan tradition, which is only to be expected. Until the 5th century, Gandhar was a prolific center of Buddhist art and early Kashmiri art well into the 7th century, reflects strong influences of the Gandharan schools. Although stone and stucco were the predominant materials in Gandhara, metal sculptures were also not uncommon. Bronze Buddhas, mostly of portable size, still continue to emerge regularly from Pakistan and Afghanistan. What is interesting is that the most Gandharan bronzes too are dark in color, as are the two examples under discussion, and are made of copper alloy. By the 8th century, Kashmiri artists seem to have developed a penchant for brass, which thereafter remained popular. The close stylistic and iconographic relationship of the Maitreya to 4th-5th century Gandhara sculptures needs little emphasis. The graceful Chakrapurush relates to images of the Gana, dwarf attendants of Shiv of the Gupta period, as well as to the marble Ganesh discovered from Gardes and now in worship in a Hindu shrine in Kabul. Both on paleographical and stylistic grounds, the Ganesh is generally dated to the late 6th century. Another example is a Vishnu image created during the rule of Kartoka dynasty. A courtier of King Sukhapurna dedicated this image on the occasion of Soma sacrifice. Pal has identified this Sukhapurna with Sukhavarman, father of Avantivarman, who can be dated to 855, roughly to 883 common era, founder of Utpala dynasty. Many other bronzes are dated to Utpala period, including the image of Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara with goddesses made during the reign of Queen Vidda, who can be dated to 980 to 1003 common era. 
Raja Tarangini mentions this queen and Oral Stain has also written on her. An image of Buddhist god Samvar, presently with Los Angeles County Museum of Art, is also ascribed to Kashmir. This is a Vajrayana Buddhist deity with tantric affiliation. Interestingly, this image shows Shaivite iconographic influence and is also seen trampling Bhairav under its foot. This is a clear example of cultic rivalry. In this image, unlike its counterparts in Nepal and Tibet, Kali, emaciated female figure, is seen submissively supporting the other foot of the god. Chamba metal images. Three brass images, those of Lakshana Devi, Nandi, Shiv's bull and Ganesh have been found from the valley of Buddhal, a tributary of river Ravi, Chamba. These are enshrined today probably in a temple. These bear inscriptions which name their donor, King Meruvarman and the sculptor Gugga. Another image by the same king and artist is found at Chhatrarhi, Ravi Valley below Brahmaur, still being worshipped under the name Shakti Devi. Chamba has yielded many other metal images and Vishwa Chandar Ohri describes them in detail. Some bronzes have also been found from Spiti Valley. Bronzes from East India from Pala period. Pala dynasty ruled in the region of present-day Bihar, Bengal and Bangladesh from 8th to 12th century common era. Kalkhandalwala pleads for a post-Gupta style of sculptures in this region, which he takes to be a precursor for Pala bronze images. Nalanda, the Buddhist monastery and university, has yielded many metal sculptures from pre-Pala period. Basu Bihar and Mainamati, both in present-day Bangladesh, Achutrajpur, Puri district in Odisha, and Sultanganj in Bihar, seem to have been other pre-Pala art centers. According to Khandalwala, this pre-Pala or post-Gupta style was centered at Nalanda, from where it spread to other centers. Nalanda was patronized by Dharmpal, who is dated to 776 to 808 common era, and his successor Devapal, 808 to 843 common era, both Pala rulers. Nalanda seems to have continued to be a great art and learning center, and along with this, Kurkihar became an important center of image making. Marking the two main art centers of Pala period, Khandalwala says, It is evident from inscribed images that from the period of Devapala, two distinct schools of casting metal images existed in Bihar in close proximity to each other, namely at Nalanda and Kurkihar. The backdrop for this style was provided by the activity which flourished in the 8th century at several centers, not only in present-day Bihar, but also in Bengal and Bangladesh, as also at Achutrajpur in Odisha. The pre-Devapala style at Nalanda is characterized by a direct simplicity and 
a somewhat elongated torso and is generally restricted to images of the Buddha, the various Bodhisattvas and their consorts, the Taras. In several instances, it reminds one of the lingering vestiges of the post-Gupta period in features, coiffure and ornaments. The emergence of another distinctive Pala idiom is witnessed during the period of Devapala. Yet, even during this period, the two main centers, Nalanda and Kurkehar, produced images with stylistic distinctions independent of each other. In contrast to the linear style at Nalanda, Kurkehar presents a more robust and rounded style, almost fleshy in appearance. It also favors elaborate ornamentation, which is generally absent at Nalanda. The base, Peter, on which the image stands or is seated, created in all kinds of shapes with lions and mythical creatures decorated on it, along with Prabha Mandapa, halo, are distinct features of Pala bronzes. Highly ornamented thrones are also seen. Two artist names, Bhiman and his son, Bit Palo, from this period, have been mentioned by 17th century Tibetan monk historian Tarnath. Bronzes were made for Brahminical, Buddhist, and Jain cults. Some Jain images have been found from Jhevari, Chittagong district, Bangladesh, and Alaura, Manbhum from Odisha. Even during the reign of Vagrahapal III, which can be dated to almost 1041 to 1067 common era, Buddha images appear with a crown. Called crowned Buddhas, images with this feature are limited to his reign only. These are from Kurkihar. Few examples of the bronzes discussed above are Tara from Achit Rajpur in Nalanda, in Nalanda mannerism of 8th century common era, Bodhisattva Vajrapani with National Museum Delhi in the style of 8th century Nalanda school, Bodhisattva Lokanath and Tara, probably the work of the same artist, and seated Buddha in Bhumi Sparshamudra. Brahminical images include Balarama, which has an inscription of the ninth regnal year of Devapala, that is 817 common era. On the side of this image, an elephant is seen surmounted by a mythical animal, which appears to be a feature of Pala bronzes. Scene depicting birth of Buddha has also been found. It has 
Indra standing next to Maya. There is a votive stupa depicting scenes from the life of Buddha, Buddha's descent from Tushita heaven, Avalokiteshvara, Manjushri Bodhisattva holding a manuscript and sword to cut through ignorance. Four Dhyani Buddhas are seen in four directions on his crown. Tara from Kurkihar, a 9th century Hariti from Nalanda, Ambika from Achyut Rajpur, and Maheshwar from Bengal, Chola bronzes. In Chola period, bronzes usually lack inscriptions, unlike architecture from the same period. The fact that bronzes could have been transported over long distances makes it extremely difficult to study them. And metal casting schools, as has been observed before. Extreme high quality of bronze images made during Chola period show that either the tradition already existed in the region and achieved immense heights or developed at a very fast pace. A typical example of a group of Chola bronze shows Kalyan Sundarship. All the images in the group are from Tiruvenkadu and may be roughly dated to 11th century Common Era. Tiruvenkadu seems to have been an important center of image making. The height of the figures is made in hierarchical order. Thus, Shiv is tallest, followed by Parvati and Vishnu who are almost the same height. The shortest one is the lady attending Parvati, who may be Lakshmi. Huntington discusses some sculptures from Tiruvenkadu and says, Stylistically, the facial features and the treatment of the garments and ornaments find close parallels with contemporaneous stone sculptures. This is also clearly seen in an image of Shiv as Bhikshatan, also from Tiruvenkadu in the Tanjo district, dating from about mid 11th century. An inscription dated to the equivalent of 1048 common era may refer to this image. Compared with the earlier example of the same subject on the Nageshwara Swami temple, which revealed the heritage of Pallava style naturalism, this figure more closely parallels stone images from the time of Rajaraja I and later in the full forms of the body, broad shoulders and the rather crispy delineated detail. The best known sculpture from Chola bronze is Nataraja or dancing Shiv. When Shiv dances in a specific manner or in a good mood, it is called Ananda Tanda. Shiv, while dancing, changes his stance from Chatur to Lalit and to Chatur again. In Chatur, his weight is on the right leg, while he touches the floor with the ball of the left foot. In Lalit, he changes his weight to the left leg in a similar manner. In a depiction of his fierce form in bronze from Tiruvarangalam, he holds a flame on his back left hand. His front left hand is in Dandahasta Mudra or Gajahasta Mudra since it resembles an elephant trunk. Back right hand holds a Damru drum and front right hand is in Abhay Mudra. He dances on the body of demon Apasmara, Muyalaka, who symbolizes ignorance. In another variation, Shiv lifts his left leg in the air. Some versions of a myth say that Shiv danced after vanquishing some heretical rishis. According to one story, Shiv took the form of Bhikshatan and along with Mohini, Vishnu in the form of a seductress, went to test some rishis. The rishis tried to destroy Shiv by sending a tiger, a snake and a dwarf called Apasma. All of these were of course conquered by Shiv. These three elements may be seen as symbolizing beast nature, untamed minds, evil traits like egoism and ignorance, 
और एंड मिजरीज एंड फेयर विच ऋषिज मस्ट ओवरकम इन ऑर्डर टू रियलाइज द स्पिरिचुअल पाथ और द साइकिल ऑफ रीबर्थ द थ्री एलिमेंट्स कैन इन फैक्ट बी सीन इन द इमेज टाइगर स्किन स्नेक एंड अपस्मार बिलो शिव स्टीट another representation is that of krishna overcoming kalyanag the snake is also taken to represent time which krishna defeats and therefore he is capable of granting immortality in chola sculpture apart from deities human devotees have also been depicted one of these is the sculpture of karaika amayar she is depicted in an emaciated form to depict her penance and hardships she was one of the three female saints out of 63 nayanmars another example is the image of manikka vachakar who was a 9th century common era tamil shaivite saint he wrote much poetry which became extremely popular and is sung even today this image is presently with national museum delhi In India there is a practice of doing abhishek to bronzes it involves bathing the idol with milk honey oil and other substance and then a layer of ghee is applied this naturally protects the bronzes thus images which are worshiped go through this process and therefore are better protected many monuments and images are still under worship in Tamil Nadu today and are part of living tradition in chola bronzes it is usually seen that only the most basic elements are shown to represent the deity for example in case of tripurantaka the bow and arrow disappear only shiv's pose as holding them is sufficient to suggest his identity as the destroyer of demon tripura kapila vatsayan writes on chola bronzes in the preface to nagaswami's work understandably these bronzes have evoked many responses some negative others ecstatic they bewildered gothi they inspired zimmer and rodin stimulated kumaraswami to present a theory of art which made no intrinsic distinction between art and craft orobindo wrote about their philosophic background and their capacity to evoke spiritual states of mind mercia eliade related the images to the larger background of religion and speculative thought stella cranbridge 
dwelt on their artistic beauty and Alice Buna on the sacred geometry they followed. Nagaswami mentions many significant bronze images from Pallava and Chola period. An important image of Parvati which has been dated to 917 common era is an exceptionally detailed work of art. His observations with regard to Pallava period bronzes are important. While inscriptional evidence is of some help in dating bronzes of the Chola period, Pallava bronzes can be dated only on stylistic grounds. Several bronzes that bear very close resemblance to the dated stone sculpture of the 8th and 9th century AD have come to light in recent years. So that the existence of a Pallava style is now beyond doubt. Many well-known Pallava bronzes are the lovely Somaskanda from Thiruvalangadu, Thanjavu district, now in the Government Museum, Madras, roughly 8th century AD. The Vishwa Paharana, 8th century AD again, the Kuram Natraja, 8th century, and the Maitreya, 8th century, from Kaveri Pumpattinum. The number of images of Vishnu have been reported from several places, like Perunthotam, a significant image of Vishnu of Pallava period, again 800 common era, is under worship in a temple near Madras. An ex extraordinary image of Three Vikrama in metal, now under worship in Singana Lur near Coimbatore, is a splendid image of the Pallava age. All these images have broad and high shoulders, heavy lower garments, the rolled waist cloth falling heavily between the legs, the upavita, often with broad ribbon-like uttariya, carried over the right arm. An examination of Pallava bronzes also makes it clear that the artist paid greater attention to even minute details in the wax stage itself so that there was little chiseling to do after the casting of the image. By contrast, from about the 12th century AD, the wax model was fairly rough made and extensive chiseling had to be resorted to after final casting. The discovery of an inscribed Parvati dated to AD 917, a Nataraja bronze and inscribed Uma from Karaiviram village, Aranaga Swami, and he writes about this in Lalit Kala journal, helps us in assigning some rather elusive bronzes to the late Pallava period. An outstanding example of this style is the splendid Kalyana Sundar from Vadakkalatur, Thanjavu district, which can be dated to 875 AD. The Nataraja and Shivakami from the same village were also made about the same time. It is well to recall that Thanjavur district was under the Pallava rule from the 6th to almost 10th century common era. Several inscriptions, including royal charters on copper plates, have come to light from Thanjavur, Kumbakonam, Mayavaram, and Nagapatinam regions, all in Thanjavur district. He suggests three divisions for the following Chola period bronzes, Aditya school, Sembian Mahadevi school, and Rajaraja school. He notes that images meant for worship are cast solid, whereas those not meant for worship are generally hollow. The method of making bronze images seems to have survived from a long period and is still practiced today. It has been called Madhuchishta Vidhana in Indian texts and is commonly known as Sireperdi or lost wax method.
the image maker from tamil nadu probably did not follow any textual prescriptions while making an image this can be seen while observing and talking to the artists from the living tradition of tamil nadu even today